Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome back to Donkey Kong Country 2 Unveiled, where last time we hit the almost 40 hour mark on our clock there, and we took care of the second level of the Lost World, which I have really mixed feelings about how that episode turned out. It was a great level, really cool, definitely gave back that, you know, feeling of cask task, especially in the way that the uh, first half was way more difficult than the second half. But, you know, just the video itself, Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. I feel like it was a lot of replaying the same parts. So what ended up happening was I was focusing more on you know, why things felt weird or why things weren't working or why you know I didn't feel a certain way about some parts. I hope it didn't come off as overly negative. Uh, it's just that in the level, I guess, where you're replaying a lot of things and dying a lot, the majority of what you're talking about is going to be why you think you died and why it's all the game and the controller's fault. But Club is Kiosk here. In World 4, this is usually a clobber carnage. So we're going to have to see just what we have in store for us today. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, for example, in Jungle Jinx, which would have normally been the first level of the Lost, uh, Lost World, we would have had tires. I don't think we've seen the tire at all throughout the hacks so far. Uh, but each level of Unveiled's Lost World definitely does seem to have a certain theme to it. Either the reversal barrels or the, uh, you know, the time limit where you get to defeat enemies. And the original game's Lost World was much like that as well, where one level would have tires as a theme. Uh, you know, the volcano level had the directional barrels or the clobber theme. So it definitely does feel like it's a homage to the original game as well. But Soothing Shadows is what we have today. Will it involve clobbers in any way? Let's see here. It's of course once again an outdoor level, just as the uh, third level of the Lost World normally is. Now I'm holding Y, and Y does not seem to work at all at the moment. So there's no run or roll. It's basically Mario right now, but I guess even Mario can run. So it's literally Donkey Kong Arcade, <laughs> where there's just left, right, and even the down. It looks like so it's actually a little bit, you know, still more advanced than Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Arcade. Can we team up? We can. But if we team up, can we throw? Is like, is Y just completely disabled? Yes. So it's all about just weird platforming then. Is this a jump we can make? Kind of? What is any of this? Like, how was I supposed to do any of that? Okay, okay, so that's how you do that. Uh, you know, without the ability to roll. This is fascinating. And as always, I'm assuming we have one bonus game to find with one DK coin inside of it. Now, this is like all a timing thing. Uh, and okay, so that is the, you know, not the proper timing. Uh, probably gonna have to life farm at some point, but alright, again, definitely kind of a gimmick uh, that was being focused on in this level. And in this case, it is not being able to use the Y button. Is any other button disabled? Okay, so you can switch partners. You can pause, of course. Does teaming up serve any purpose if we can't... Okay, 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 so... Oh, and that guy is slowly moving to the left. So, basically, it just becomes a game of dodging the enemy. Understood. All right, everything's coming together. Uh, as far as gimmicks go, it's definitely one of the more understandable ones. We're not debating if a sign says fruits or faults, which I very clearly said faults. But you know what? I could go for some fruit. And that's just, all right, it's going to come down a lot to timing jumps, which, uh, you know, we never in Donkey Kong Country ever normally let go of that Y button. I always have my thumb on the run slash roll button, whether I'm playing you know, Donkey Kong or a Mario game, pretty much any platform, even you know, you're playing a Mega Man game, thumbs always on that Y button or B button, depending on the console to charge up your shot. Uh, it's just a thing that I think us gamers do. So this does definitely require changing your way of thinking a little bit. Okay, so that guy only comes up from above the spikes, like a split second there, and that's the case. So theoretically, one quarter of the way through the level, so far, I know I say this like every level. I when I was editing uh, editing the last part, like four hundred thousand times, I was like, all right, this isn't that bad. It's not going to take us much longer, I don't think. Uh, and then it was still quite the ordeal after that point. But you know, things could always be worse. How they could be worse, I don't know, and again, I'm not sure. I feel like definitely you want Diddy for as long as possible, because he, of course, has the higher jump, higher bounce. Uh, but yeah, things would always be worse, as long as it's not like Kaizo or such. So I guess we'll try this with Dixie? Oh, wow, like, can you, no, like, you can't even float, because that's the Y button as well. Like, is this a jump that Dixie can make? Okay, well, definitely not like that, but otherwise, we have Diddy now, which is pretty nice. So let that flitter get 
really close before we do that. And this first one, can we jump over you? Hmm. So it's like you need a little bit of movement before you jump. Because if you're just pressing against those spikes and then you press the jump button, it won't give you as much distance. Like, again, this is just... I guess this is more of a, you know, having to wrap your head around something you're not used to than I thought. But okay, so we're slowly becoming, you know, able to do this part pretty flawlessly, it looks like. And we'll let you come down here, and I feel like you do that, and then that. And then that gives you just somehow a little bit more distance. Not sure the exact science behind that, uh, but it apparently works. And, oh, oh, and then you get jammed on the corner of the platform, something we saw many times in the last level, and something that, in playing the original Donkey Kong Country games, I never really thought much about. It's like, there are always some weird interactions with... Oh, right, you have to duck, but that's what DK barrels are made for. Like, yeah, there have always been some weird interactions with floors and things, I think, but... Otherwise, I feel like in the last couple levels, we've seen more of that than I've probably ever experienced in Donkey Kong Country in my life. So this one, you always want to do a jump jump my dad kind of just got caught on the side of the spikes there all right so i'm gonna have to perfect this a little bit better clearly and i'll see you once i do like yeah like it's really tough for dixie to do that and that time it didn't look like i should have you know not made it i don't think i got caught on the spikes that time Wow, yeah, this is this is weirder than I had given it credit for initially, for sure. Alright, somehow pulled that off. I'm just waiting for there to be a part, though, where, like, you do need both partners for some reason. Uh, the Lost World has seemed to, like, you know, having parts that certain characters are better at than others. And, yeah, that's just a matter of figuring out the timing there as well. But once you get that figured out, like, you should never fail it again. It's so easy to be either too early or too late there. There's just like the smallest window. It's just amazing that control, that being able to roll around and, you know, this, this move faster gives you in a video game. But all right. So when it's closest to me, I feel like even if I jumped then, like I'm going to jump when it looks like I should and then like, like now, but no. Okay, so just a little bit. So when it's centered in the hole, coming back towards you is when you want to jump. That's my theory. Uh, wait, how many lives is that? Okay, so we'll probably life farm after this. I just noticed I have no bananas as well, which means, like, unless you life farm, you're really not getting any extra lives in this level. Unless some balloons start showing up eventually. But yeah, not even any bananas to kind of, like, guide you here. Actually, there's bananas. Have I actually just been collecting enough to coincidentally have zero in that case? Huh. And wow, okay, this is the most flawless run we've had so far, but it can all be ended by this guy right here. Um, so... Okay, okay, and I didn't get jammed. Wow. Alright, so this is the second time I think we've actually been back here. Like, that flitters hard to time when they've put all these zingers in your face. I feel like just, in case I take a hit, let's get Dixie in front here, and then I can always have Diddy afterwards. But hey, it actually worked, and then... Alright, so we're gonna have a lot of weird kind of flitter timing shenanigans. Got it. Whoa, I wasn't prepared for that one to work out. Uh, and this arrow barrel is going to shoot us straight up, so we need to time it so that we don't hit the zinger on the way out. Okay, okay. I, at first I thought I was being shot out, like, really fast, but it was actually just a coin. Um, okay, what is this? Like, I can't make that jump without a... with a roll, right? Hmm... What if I had a... Would a team tag have changed anything there? That's a weird spot. Now, I'll probably life farm after this life, just because we're on such a roll here now. Yeah, I guess bananas somehow did miraculously take me exactly back to zero bananas, which made it give the illusion that we weren't collecting any. But okay. We're slowly getting it. But... What is with that part that we just died at? And yeah, if it means a, a team throw, we definitely have to keep both partners for as long as possible, which I'm somehow, once again, miraculously doing. 
like, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, well, that ruined all of that. But the good thing is that, like, most of this is memorization. Where, like, once you get it, you pretty much know what the timing is for future runs. But yeah, I feel like... You know, if I was double stacked with, like... Well, that, that's that. Hmm. Like, if you could make him run at you... Like, maybe if I just jumped into the hole a little bit, but then, like... You know, doubled back to the left, he would have woken up, and then you can bounce on him as he's going into the hole? Something weird like that is what you probably have to do. Anyway, life farming time. It's very weird coming back to here and being able to use the Y button again, but then we're going to be going back to a place where we no longer can. I guess that means there's also going to be, like, no barrels or anything that we can pick up throughout the level, because Y has just been completely disabled. Does not seem to work in any way. Which, yeah, it makes for a very fascinating gimmick. There's lots of kind of weird timing shenanigans that we have to pull off. But it's... It's, it's you know... <laughs> in the last part, I was like, oh yeah, you know, not that bad. Only going to be a few more minutes before we beat it. And then I would look down at the timeline while it was editing, and there would still be like hours of content left to do. Now, the last recording session lasted about two hours, so not that bad. A little bit longer than the first Lost World level, but I guess we'll see how this one goes. But, like, look, we're already making some great progress and you know, getting past that first part consistently. Like, the last level that we played... Let me just get by this one. I guess we could always do this, too. It definitely brought back so, like, you know, such memories of Cask Task in that the first half just had so many little spots where it was so easy to mess up. And then once you did, your whole run was essentially over. Well, the second half was, like, a lot more forgiving. Uh, but this level feels like, you know, it's a lot more learnable. A lot more, like, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Like, something like that, but better. That's definitely what you have to do. Alright, alright. New progress here. Very good, very good. Um, alright, so we just got to do the literal same thing again, but this time with a zinger in the way, which I don't think should be that bad. Just a matter of getting that time. Is there going to be another clobber or something that's going to have to come that I have to bounce on? Oh, okay. I was like, for a second I was like, is this a filter? Do I have to have two Kongs? But no. And it's great to see that, you know, both the spots so far where I was like, maybe you have to have both Kongs to beat this actually did not end up being the case. Uh, but okay, so that was just kind of luck there. Is this a speed run kind of thing? Yes, it is. And I have to do a weird bounce off of you. Crunches are the literal most, like, weirdest things to deal with in this game. When you bounce on them, it just feels really bad. Also, like, how do I determine which way I bounce? Like, I think whichever direction you're facing, you'll bounce backwards. So I have to land on him facing to the left, if I'm understanding correctly? No. Maybe? Hmm. Is there a good place to, to practice with crunches a little bit? Instead of, like, having to get back to that part every single time? Because I would love to understand a little bit better just how you bounce off of them, then. It's funny that all the kind of stuff we've done in this hack, I've never really thought too much about it. Like, is it determined by which kind of, you know, half of them? If you land on them on, like, the left side, you bounce to the left. If you land on them on the right side, you bounce to the right. That sounds a little bit more correct now that I'm thinking about it. I could also put in, like, the original Donkey Kong Country 2. Lots of crunches in, like, you know, the early levels of that. Otherwise, where can we really, you know, find a cruncha in this game? Just, like, an easy one to access. If I think about it, I'll let you know. But I think it makes more sense to go find out about this now and to keep replaying the entire level to that point, not quite understanding exactly what we should do. I think there's... Yeah, we haven't gotten the checkpoint yet, so we can go into Warp Woods. I think there's... Okay, now I can actually use the Y button again. Yes. Uh, so... So how... So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and land on his right side while I'm facing to the right. Okay, so... It looks like it's determined by if you land on, like, his right side of his body or his left side of his body. So now, we're going to just do it again, just to land on his left side. And, like, yeah, see how it works weird in this level? Because there was no checkpoint, because it somehow... Yeah, okay, so whatever side of him you touch is the side you bounce off of. Got it. 
Yeah, Warp Woods, very cool level. It almost feels like, you know, a gimmick that could have been saved for the Lost World. It's just so kind of out there. Maybe we'll see it again. One thing I was really expecting to see in the Lost World was another uh, cannonball carrying level. If we never see another one of those again, I will not complain. Uh, but I could just imagine making like a really, really tough one that is appropriate for the Lost World. So, you know, two more levels to go after this. You just never know what we're going to experience. But Soothing Shadows, I think we are making some decent progress here. It really just makes sense to always have Dixie in front because nothing that makes Dixie beneficial to use really applies in this level. She can't float, you know, she can't pick up objects and hold them in a certain way. So really the only thing she brings to the table here is that she doesn't jump as far and she doesn't bounce as high. So it just always makes sense to kind of have Diddy in reserve. So that's hopefully, you know, when you get to the later, more difficult parts, you have him to use. But we're just getting slapped at the beginning now again. So all the things I said about us getting used to the beginning were a lie, apparently. All right, here we are, back to Progress Town again. Very good, very good. So then you do that, and then that. That's actually really clever! And then it, there was a minute where... I wasn't really expecting that to be the solution. I was almost convinced for a second that it was a filter, that you had to have both partners. That's a little weird at the time, but okay. And then this is a race. Looks like to there, alright, very good. And then this is all about just landing on the left side of this guy. Yes! Yes, alright, new progress now. So it's not so much timing the flitter, but it is timing the zinger. Like, I feel like... Okay. And that one, again. So then that actually is almost exactly like the beginning of the level. You're pretty much just once again timing while you wait for that flitter to come by. Oh, I feel like the number of gimmicks you can, like, associate with not being able to hold the Y button is limited. So we're already kind of seeing some repeats, which, I mean, isn't the worst thing. Because if you get used to it early on in the level... You know, you should be pretty good when you encounter them again later. Uh, but I say that, I'm still messing up this first jump all the time. It just feels really weird to, to time, especially with Dixie. So maybe I should use Diddy for that one and then switch to Dixie as the meat shield. Uh, because yeah, once we get here with Diddy, we're usually pretty decent. Never mind. And then you land on that guy. That's not something that commonly happens. All right, so we're proceeding through the level with Dixie now. And yeah, isn't it weird? Like, you know, without her floating ability, it's like, you know, Dixie doesn't really do all that much. Or at least, you know, even without the Y button, Diddy still has those reasons that you'd like to use him. But yeah, Dixie really just uses all ability without that Y button. Okay, so far so good. And I like how we're getting lots of money from this barrel. Like, you'll play some levels and it just will be never any money. And that one barrel gives you two coins, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I don't think we've ever actually made that bounce with Dixie before. And it feels a little bit different, so if we ever get there with her again, uh, we'll have to figure that out. I was so in the zone that I forgot about that guy. Alright, that was a very, very close kind of thing there. Um, okay, so... That, that, alright, and then this, and then this. Oh, wow, okay, just barely. A lot of really close calls there, but we did okay. And then back to this one again, which we did pretty well last time, I think. Very nice. And this one also wasn't too bad. Just a matter of getting the timing down. Mm. Close. Wow, here's a rare sight, having Dixie to this point. Now, do we just kind of do the rest with Diddy because that's what we're used to? And then have Dixie in reserve? Maybe. 
maybe that's what we'll do. Because I feel like I've just gotten so used to this part with Dixie, uh, with Diddy now. Uh, like, to change it would not probably end well. And then if we really need to do a little bit with Dixie, we can. So that will be my strategy going forward here. And holy moly, we have never messed that part up before. So, you know, once things were going good, I guess it finally decided it was time for that. But all right, I mean, it's giving us a little bit of a different perspective here. This makes me wish, though, like, you know, man, imagine if we did still have Diddy. We'd really be golden. But okay, so it is totally possible to do all this with her as well. Which is good to- no, that might have been a little far, yes. I feel like that's a good spot for Dixie, or rather Diddy. Just because he got so far- man, did you ever realize how similar their names are? Trying to say them both and talk about them both? Totally impossible. Alright, so this is the farthest we've ever made it with both Kongs. And I'm gonna put Dixie in front here just because if I should accidentally take a hit here, it might as well be her. And then we'll switch back to Diddy here. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Very nice. And yeah, why not? Get Dixie here. I don't think there's any real benefit to using Diddy. And yeah, it's just a matter of making sure that when you bounce, so you're not too close to the zinger. Something like that. Okay, 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 but that's okay. We can do this a little bit. We can do this dance again. Do that. And squitter? Do you have to do like a jump the second that you come out of the barrel? Or do I just completely skip squitter? Hmm, like I see a no squitter sign like already. I, I think you can do that, right? If you press jump like the instant, or even if you just hold right, there might be like a moment that you float. Yes! Yes! Okay! See, I've played enough Donkey Kong Country 2 to just understand the weird way that things feel sometimes. And this is just a matter of like... Like something like that. Okay. Can I do the Y button now? No. So how do you get that? Did I do something wrong? Should I have been able to keep Squitter past the sign? Something doesn't feel right. I wonder if there's a glitch I don't know? You go back and get Squitter again. Because there's no way I can make this. And like, why is it showing to just drop down? Unless, you know, you still had Squitter, right? Or maybe, oh, you're probably supposed to shoot a web from the left of the sign, open it up, and then, ah, uh, okay, so I've messed this puzzle up. I get it. But can you go back and get Squitter again? That's the question. No. Okay, so we're essentially stuck. But I think I understand them. That's what you're supposed to do. You have to put a web to the other side and then go get it. Not sure how you're supposed to know that before you lose Squitter. But interesting puzzle. Ooh, okay. Alright, so back here again. Uh, I mean, if I could just keep both Kongs with me, I could even cheese that whole squitter part, which would be kind of nice. But okay, so back to here. Very good. And we can bring, uh, bring you back. This one's just weird whenever you do it. Alright, something like that. Oh, oh. Okay, we can cheese this. We can cheese this. If you go into a barrel, does it screw it up where Diddy becomes the front partner for some reason? I'm almost tempted to just cheese it. Learn absolutely nothing and just cheese this part. You see, what you're supposed to do is like that. And then if you hurry like real fast... Like, but, like, see, that should be the last thing you do. Go as high as possible and then shoot a web down here and then rush it, but. Uh, 
Like, okay, okay. Like, let's do this. And then this. Okay, very good. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so this time it's not even like a like a race. It's just like a Oh Wow though. Okay, so you know if I wanna I think if I wanna save my hit for any type, it's probably that mess right there. That looks awful to deal with, and I was somehow doing it, but I guess you know Squitter's always had a weird hitbox kinda. A pixel of his foot must have, like, touched the zinger, but... Alright, so now I'm rethinking that strategy. If I get the chance to cheese something again, I'll try and save it for there. Because I feel like you could practice that all day and still probably mess it up. There we go. It wasn't that hard. <sighs> Thankfully, those guys have pretty generous hitboxes from the top. Alright, this one, very nice. Uh-oh, uh, I pressed the jump button, but it was so lightly that it, like, didn't register. It's alright, though, we've got Diddy. Uh, just means we don't get a free hit anywhere, but honestly, I think it'd be more fun to beat it without a free hit. You know, I say that, but I would totally take a victory with the, uh, you know, with the, a damage take as well. Okay, he's got to time this one now. Uh, and that's not how you time that one. Like, oh, it kind of happened there again, but thankfully we did not lose a partner over it. And this part always doesn't feel so great, ugh, but I think we just barely did it successfully there. And once again, we might as well get a little meat shieldy out here. It's kind of an awkward thing to time. This means you're timing two things at once, which never feels great. Hmm. Alright, something like that. Ugh. Okay, well, that's not how you're supposed to probably time that. But okay, we're gonna have to do these last couple parts legit then, which, you know, I don't mind that all that much. I don't think this one's that hard to do legit. We haven't done it yet. We've cheesed it... What have we only actually made it past this, like, once so far? I think you just want to go, like, as high as possible. Oh, but shoot. You know, the sign... See, I don't like webs in this game. You just never know when they're going to disappear or not. Like, sometimes it feels like, you know, they disappear in order. Other times... Hmm. It doesn't really go down all that well. If only, like, you could just stand on a normal platform. Oh, no! I was so busy focusing on the right... See, this level, it's funny because it's more than just about the Y button not working. There's also a lot of multitasking going on. Uh, and that, combined with the fact that you can't play the game as you normally would, all just makes this massive, mind-blowing challenge, which is awesome, but wow is it hard to perfect at times. <laughs> See, that's what I mean about those guys being pretty generous, because I don't know how exactly I did that. That was pretty spooky right there. Um, now nah, I'm gonna start the skin from the beginning. I don't know, just making these little hops. We had that problem in Cask Task as well. And there was like a little hop I would sometimes just not make because I didn't press the button quite enough. But okay, okay. Now we're getting some consistency here, which always makes me glad. Um, I think this next one. Something like that. And then this one is just... Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So even though we have the extra hit, I guess we'll try it legit. But yeah, that zinger... That might not have been far enough. Oh, but that's the right idea if only I had made it go a little bit farther. But okay. Okay, so I think it's our second time getting back here. Um, and yeah, nothing... Nothing that hard on that one. And then this one is just got to time this guy, and then... Okay, so I think this is the farthest we've made it. And I tried to go through the middle last time, but as I've been playing, I'm like, you know, why not try and go as high as possible? I feel like that's where you're kind of the safest. Because you can, you know, more easily predict what's going on at the top of the screen than, like, you know, farther in. Oh! If only I had a hit. 
Oh. All right. Oh no! <laughs> Leaving Mad Flitter there actually messed up my bounce. Uh, I was gonna say we're doing it legit, no kind of freebies, but no, oh, maybe we'll get back there and be able to take a freebie after all. Ooh. Oh wow! Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa! So that means that if I have both partners there, I can actually no, but you can't do a team throw. So, how do you make use of that barrel then? I have no idea, but I mean, I guess I'll, I'll take it. We lost the partner to do it, so it wasn't really worth it, but I guess I'll take it. I wonder if there's any other secret barrels like that, because that would be mighty fine. Um, but okay, let's see what we got here. Ugh. Yeah, again, it's just timing everything is not as easy as it may look, but wow! What a weird barrel that was! And like, how would you even make use of that normally? Unless you take a hit. And are there any other secrets like that? I mean, I, I'm not... It's not so difficult that we're at the point where it's like, yeah, I need a warp barrel or something to get by this, but at the same time, if there are secrets <laughs> like that, I'm not gonna complain. Alright, it's like... Like, I don't even see a barrel up there, and you can't throw, because there's no Y button, so... I don't know. I wonder what I'm missing. Like, you'd think there must be a way to get into that barrel without taking a hit. Like, is there just something I'm not doing? But, I mean, it's not like that part with the zingers coming up and down is the most difficult thing out there. Uh, I think we've only gotten hit by it once or twice, so... It's like, whatever, I guess. But okay, um, back to here again. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess we'll try this legit. We kind of had it last time. I was just a little bit... Okay, well, kind of did that a little bit incorrectly. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I've ever actually done this part legit. How do you even time this? Okay, there you go. Well, that's how you do that, apparently. It felt really uncomfortable, but it worked. Okay, and then that's not really that difficult. And then we got this bad boy again. All right, so I'm kind of scared because I really thought my idea of going, like, as high as possible would work. Like, just look, for example, the bottom right zinger right now. Like, if I stood on that, like, rock sticking up, would I even be safe in that area? Squitter's so awkward that I feel like I still wouldn't be. Unless it was, like, pixel perfect, so I feel like the best strat is just, uh, I don't know. Like, like, is there even, like, a safe spot up here? Not really, because the zingers are moving so, like, left and right. But, like, I can jump, right? But I'm like, why did that disappear so quickly? I think that's the strat, though. I think the strat is just to go along the top and just to jump if you're ever in danger. And to slowly inch your way to the right. Just gotta perfect it now. Maybe you just bounce straight upwards? Like, where is that barrel even? Like, is it above the screen right now? Because I only really got into it because I took damage and then did one of those, like, super high bounces after you take damage sometimes. I guess I'll have to probably review the footage on that one, but yeah, just, that barrel's just weird all around. Like, it's also possible, like, there's another barrel that leads to that barrel, so maybe it's, like, part of a much larger skip that I'm just not aware of. That's also a possibility, but okay, let's see, this guy here, who should we be here? Like, in case I take damage by accident, I don't know. Just best not to take damage here at all, I guess. Very nice, very nice. So we've still never successfully done this one. It's just... Okay, so... Because when you come out from the, uh... From the transformation, you do, like, a, a another additional hop, it seems. Because... Or maybe it's just because, like, I'm in the middle of jumping when I'm transformed back into the Kongs. It just gives me kind of, like, a boost upwards, it feels. Again, just one of those situations you don't normally think of in the original game. 
Oh no, okay, so we got Dixie for the rest of this now. Uh, or not. Well, we, let's use this to explore a little bit. Like, how could you possibly get into that? Okay, okay, okay. And see, the issue is, is that this part's so far into the level that, like, you don't get back to it fast enough to really get good at it. Um, but... Oh, 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 but darn. I might have just, like, made it not far enough. Oh, okay. And while these guys are much better time than that other time we were here, and I take a hit right at this part where, you know, this is a freebie right here. This is, like, the easiest part of the level. And then I would have been here and would have been able to take a hit. Oh, just millimeters away. But all right, let's try this again. Let's try the whole top of the screen strat because I feel like there's some there's some logic to that. But see, like, why did that one disappear so quickly when the one I was already standing on wasn't even disappearing? I know that there's a weird way that these things are ordered and it's my fault for not, like, better studying that to this point because of course it would be necessary eventually. Uh, but the webs in this game have just always confused me about, like, you know, why sometimes it seems like it disappears right after you shoot it, and then another time it lasts, like, 15 seconds. Ugh. Hopefully someone's written a, you know, a thesis or something about that somewhere I can go review after. Whoa, we have never made that mistake before. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's a first time for everything. Ugh, that doesn't feel all that great, though, in terms of, you know where we're going to be going from here, but I guess we'll see what we can do with Dixie if we get by this part. Alright, let's see. Can we have our first ever successful run? I mean, oh, actually, we kind of did it last time. Uh, I just messed up in kind of what came after. Like, like, is this low enough that I don't get hit by the zinger? Probably, right? Hey, I didn't press anything in that, uh, that web formed. That's kind of weird. But I did not press A. Maybe one of the shoulder buttons got hit by accident, but okay. Like, if I could have just done that last time when I had both Kongs. Uh, but wow, so we're, uh, you know, even more consistently getting that part now, which is really nice to see. And now, what about this part again? With just one Kong, except this time it's Dixie instead of Diddy. Like, I feel like the top of the screen makes the most sense. Putting yourself in the middle where there's just so much to like have to dodge. And I can just do like that. So, you know, we're just gonna dodge, we're just gonna, oh, what? I thought I jumped. But yeah, like if you just inch your way across the top, jumping whenever there's danger, I feel like that has to be the best strat. Unless you have both Kongs, in which case I'm not gonna be ashamed of cheesing it. Something just always goes wrong. Whoa! Okay, okay, okay. I jumped off those spikes. Maybe I still had like a millisecond worth of invincibility left. <sighs> and then we're here again with one. I mean, I don't know. Maybe deep down I just know I have to beat it legit. Or maybe I just always play like garbage for some reason when it comes to this point. I don't know, but like this part has become nothing now. It's like that's the easiest part of the whole level now at this point. <laughs> if I could just keep both Kongs again past there. Ugh. But, you know, I feel like, like, hmm. Like, I don't know why this is giving me so much trouble. This feels like Donkey Kong 101 right here. Just jumping over some zingers and making some webs. Maybe it's because Squitter's hitbox is kind of weird. I don't know. But what? Oh, does that mean I would, I, ugh. Oh. I needed to make webs so I could go up. Oh! <laughs> I mean, I can't even get mad about that one because, like, it's obvious that you need to make yourself a staircase before you lose the invincibility. I was just so excited. Like, and if I stand here, I would have been safe, so I could have made a couple webs and then lost Squitter. Oh, mamma mia.
Okay, two hits, here we go. I just wish it was simple, but you know, it can't be that simple. It can't just be as simple as, you know, actually I'm just not gonna talk. I was playing way better when I wasn't yapping. Okay, I don't care, I really don't. Okay, okay. I see a banana up there. I see a banana up there. Do you think I needed to make like even another squitter web? <sighs> that's possibly what it expected you to do, but that's the checkpoint, everybody. <sighs> that's the checkpoint. Wow. Can I use the Y button again? Like that'd be funny if. Oh, but hmm, 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 hmm. Like, I don't know. I feel like. Hmm, I almost kind of jumped off the side there. But like, yeah, I don't know, like... I don't feel like you could make a web that far. I feel like maybe there's another thing here or something. Like, see how you kind of glitch on the side of that? That has to be probably related to the bonus game then. You don't just put a random banana in the air there. And not expect anything from it. Unless there's like an animal buddy up ahead we can bring back. And of course, but yes, the Y button still does not work. Hopefully I have lives. I actually haven't been paying very much attention to uh, how many lives I have. Hmm, like, I wonder. The good thing too is I guess we could always go back and get Squitter if like we wanted to try it. But I guess we'll see what we have going on here. Maybe there will be an animal buddy we can bring back or something. But there you go, that's the first half anyway. It felt very long. I don't know if that's because it was very long or if just because when you can't run or use the Y button, it makes the level feel like three times longer. But okay, uh, so far this is like, you know, compared to everything else we've done, some moving arrow barrels, like, see, you can even just do that. It's not even like that much of a hazard. Be more dangerous if it was, uh, if it was a zinger or something, but yeah, like I don't know what to expect. Like it could want you to come backwards with an animal buddy. Or maybe there is something we're supposed to do with either, you know, just like a glitch or with the squitter that you get before the checkpoint. And there's the end, finally. Finally get to see that guy. Um, and this is kind of a weird spot. Like, he moves so fast, I don't know how to time this. Dixie, you're up! Like, hmm. And this is like, you need to predict how it's going to shoot you. So like that? Is that, will that blue balloon like start moving upwards if you just wait? Is that how that works? I think they just like eventually float away. Yeah, but like, I mean, I guess if I was on like my zero life, that might have mattered. But this is like, now these really fast moving zingers are not fun. But okay, I guess that's how that works. Okay. There's like an interesting gate type thing there. Nothing in the corners, right? Nope. I guess you can probably land between them. Ah! Again, because I was kind of just, you know, somewhere I couldn't see. I had no idea where I was, so uh, when I started to make the jump, I guess I just barely nicked the end of that zinger. But I guess what we could do now is, like, if we really wanted... Oh, wait, how many lives is that? Okay, four. Phew! 
So we can, you know, just for fun, get this guy, I guess. Um, I don't think that arrow barrel... Oh, what? I just jumped there and there was like an invisible barrel? Oh, oh I guess, you know, that would just send you into the DK barrel, right? Is there any other invisible barrels? I always think that, like, when you slide off the edge like that, it's gonna do something. Okay, I guess it's just maybe a, you know, way to get you kick-started when you respawn or something. Like, if we go back... You can... Do this. And can we do anything with Squidder then? I mean, <laughs> of all places to come back to, you know, yes, I cannot wait to replay this part of the level, but, you know, it's a lot different now because if we die, we just kind of respawn right at that checkpoint. So I'm not all that worried. But, like, see, it's a lot less stressful when it's like that. Ugh. But, like, is there anything you could actually do with that? Or is it too far? I don't know, but I think I'm gonna do some life farming. Think about that. We might just play the level normally, but like, what if I get to the end? Like, do I just sacrifice myself? Because the, you know, we know that the bonus game is halfway. There's no point in replaying the first half. If it's something at the midway point we need to do to get the, the bonus game, I don't know. So many things to consider. There's still the possibility of like an animal buddy, like getting squitter at the end of the level and then having to go backwards with them or squawks or anything. You just don't know, but I, what I do know is, we need some lives, but then again, we got Cranky Man here. They have feelings. Well, now I feel terrible. I wish I was dumb so that I can reread my hints. Like, I mean, if it's any of the things that I've suggested, I totally figured it out. It just means I, you know, could have tried it more, I guess, but what do you gotta say? One more web should do the trick. So that's probably it, right? So if I respawn from the checkpoint, I can just go back and get Squitter uh, and then try to perfectly place a web so that even after I lose Squitter, I can get it. It's going to feel really bad. But at least we know now that, you know, there's no point in, uh, in playing the second half of the level, getting to the end, and then finding out we didn't get the checkpoint, or rather the bonus game. We're just going to have to figure that out before we proceed. But before we do any of that, life farm time. All right, so yeah, you really have to use your invincibility frames to get across there. It's probably not intended that you go backwards through the level um, to get a second shot at this. But heck yeah, am I going to be doing that? I'm not going to replay the whole level for this. I also noticed that we don't get any Bayou Boogie here. It's the normal Lost World music. Like, seriously? Wait, my whole game for Bayou Boogie and it gets one dang level? Color me impressed. If impressed meant not impressed because it was opposite day. But all right, let's see here. Like, yeah, it's a lot less uh, scary doing this when you know that, like, you know, should you die, you're not going to go, like, all the way back to the beginning of the level. So, like, it's easy to end up down here by accident, but I feel like you do want to be, like, up near the top of the screen. <laughs> uh, and then do something like that. Like, is the key going to be that... Hmm. It's just a lot to think about, but I think I understand what it wants. Just a little tricky to pull off. Like, how far is it? So, because don't forget that the sign is kind of over where like that, that uh, the tree trunk is on the left side of the screen. That's a really far way to shoot a web. And for it to like to be off screen and then like that's as far as you can jump without any running so like the last web has to be around here somewhere between these two trees if i'm to jump to where that banana is i don't know it seems like quite the task the cask task if you will but i guess this is like the web task because it was established that cask is like another name for barrel which i had never heard to that point but all right I think we do want to stay near the top and do some really uncomfortable jumps like that. But I think this is what we want. And I think we're safe. Kind of like around here. Okay. Oh! 
Oh! Oh, I was just about to make a comment about there's no way we're going to reach that banana. And then there's a hook. But wow, so really, just one more web. Thank you, Cranky, for your infinite wisdom. Now, how difficult will this be? You know, if I have to get back here, I'm not that worried now that we understand fully. Well, we got this. I'm guessing we don't want to go into the barrel, so that's going to waste time? Alright, well, we got uh, our invincibility reaffirmed here, which is nice. Uh, now we want to go into this one. This is really cool, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah! First try! When was the last time we beat a bonus game on our first try? <sighs> okay, and, and then, wow, the one bonus game that you get infinite tries for is the one that I beat on my first try. Ugh, oh, no comment. No comment. But anyway, that is all the secrets taken care of. Now we just have to beat the level, and we got quite far into the second half, it looked like, before we made a little bit of a silly mistake, which I think we can easily correct in our next run-through here. But let's hope this follows the ye old, or rather age-old, Donkey Kong Country 2 unveiled trope of the second half being way easier than the first half. I would not complain in the slightest. Because, yeah, I mean, like, this is all... Like, compared to the first half, none of this feels really ridiculous. This is, I think, where we took our first hit last time. Just because it's tricky combining all this together. Like, getting a good bounce and then not getting hit by the zinger. I don't know how that's even possible. Like, can I jump over the zinger onto the flitter? But then, like, it always feels like that zinger just moves so fast, you're accidentally going to hit it. Now, see, this one's much easier because you just jump over the zinger and you're done. Like, that's nothing. And then you get these guys. And this, we actually, this was probably the scariest part. Uh, that, you know, we've actually made twice in a row now. And then this is where we flubbed. Just because you can't see what you're doing in between the two zingers there. Like, so you really need to jump, like, just straight up. No directional whatsoever. Is there a safe spot to the right? There is. Like, I can... Okay, now, what's going on over there? Is that safe? Yes. Okay, so there is no safe spot. Hmm. So... Hmm... Yeah, I just, I just, I hesitated. You just need to jump in between those next two zingers. And not think too much about the barrel going back and forth. Like, you can't roll, which would make, like, the most sense. Just go under everything. Oh! Wow! Okay, I was not expecting that to work, and it actually did. Also, thinking about it, I realized that we actually beat the uh, bonus game in the last level on our first try, too, but that was just such a... Uh, uh, one second, I'll get back to that thought. Like, it didn't even really feel like it was a bonus game because you're forced into it. Um, and yeah, yeah, it just happened so quickly that... I guess I didn't really think about it too much, but yeah, I guess, you know, two levels in a row now. First try DK coins, which is kind of nice. I, yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, it'd be a lot scarier if that was a zinger going back and forth. Okay, so we can even take a hit here, which is nice. Okay, okay, okay. Am I safe? Yes. Okay, so I can just jump over this guy, and there's nothing to hurt me on the ground. Oh, but I have to worry about the barrel up top, too, maybe? Or it's, like, to the left. Okay. Now, do you think there's anything to hurt me behind the, the foreground graphic there? If not, I can just t touch the barrel. It won't matter, as long as it's not over the zingers. Whoa! Just by the skin of our teeth there. Okay, so this looks kind of not so fun to time. Hmm. Hmm. Weird. I don't get that barrel above the, uh, the checkpoint. It really doesn't seem to do all that much.
And that's how you do that. Okay, okay, okay. Something like that. Okay, so easy enough to get back here. Do we even bother bouncing on the left one? I don't know if there's even a reason to. Uh, or maybe... Yes, yes, yes. Now, do you duck in the middle of that or do you just charge it? That's the question here. I never have good luck ducking in the middle of zinger rings. But I feel like to rush, or I could jump maybe over it too. Okay, okay. And we need a good bounce here. Okay. And another bounce. A little early. Well. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing that now. I don't know what was wrong with this run. Just kind of forgot all the timing, so we might as well get a three up, I guess. Oh, no. Well, I thought I had moved in between them enough during my invincibility time, but I guess not. Back to here again. We had trouble with that the first time, but otherwise, not so much. This guy we can jump over. Easy enough. And I think here we are again. So I was too early last time. <laughs> that time I was too late, so... Well, let's hope third time's the charm. Oh, no, I forgot there was no safe spot for that one. All right, am I safe? Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, back to here. Oh. Okay, so let's just look at it for a minute. too early again. I feel like once you understand the timing, like, it will never be difficult again. Just for whatever reason, getting it the first time is throwing me for a bit of a loop. Uh-oh. I don't usually do that. Um, we're gonna have to do this part really legit now. Or not. Hmm. Tried to rush that one a little bit too quickly, I guess. So can Dixie do it? We've never really, like, you know, tried it with Dixie. We always lose her as the, uh, you know, designated meat shield. But we'll see what we can do. This part is... doesn't feel good. But, oh, wow, okay, we actually did it. Okay, so, all right, we've never done this with her before. And she's doing just fine. Uh, what about this? Okay. Oh, I was really interested in seeing what her, like, lower bounce height would do for the, the next part, but uh, instead it killed us at that part. Now, if we can just replicate what we did last time and, you know, not get hit here, we could have two Kongs for the later part of the level. Whoa. Ah, 
Getting stuck in that barrel threw off my timing. Ooh. All right. It's amazing how much higher Diddy bounces, but okay. Ah! Like, oh, it's amazing how how difficult that feels. If it wasn't for the top zinger, it'd be so easy, but just fitting through that gap, it's not even that small. Just for some reason. I don't know what's wrong. I just can't get it. All right, back here again. <laughs> we never have two Kongs for like the later parts where we could really use them, but oh well, I suppose. Just makes it sure that we're doing it legit. All right, so with that said. Isn't that funny how I can always do it with one Kong, but never both? Alright. Okay, okay. Well, let's see then. Oh, <laughs> Dixie did it! But what the heck is this? I feel like you don't want to touch him. You want to land on the ground in front of him. Okay, okay. Now, where am I going? Up. And then in here. And then what? Do I need to, like, juggle? Yeah. Oh, shoot! That's like that freaking thing that's right back at the beginning of the level! I did all of that. Wow, though. The second half is easier, but it's definitely not any shorter. So it just means always having to get back to the parts that, you know, you mess up on. Oh, that hurts. Like, that has to be close to the end. We got the G! That means we're so close! Oh, like, how come you can land and then not take an immediate hit, but then suddenly... I don't know. Alright, are we gonna make progress with Diddy for the first time? We've never made it past here with him. Always nick just the back of the zinger like that. I mean, I always put Dixie as the meat shield, but I guess she did get the farthest in the level, so... It doesn't make sense to always lose her. Okay, well, you know what they say, the right Kong in the wrong place makes all the difference in the world, so let's just put that behind us then and get on with it. Or not. Oh, if you don't do a perfectly straight upwards jump sometimes, that happens. It feels terrible every single time. I could have two Kongs right now. And it's always like, well, what if I had both? Just how far could I go? But you know, we'll show the game. We'll beat it with just Dixie here. Okay. Hmm. OK. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, all these basic timing things. I shouldn't be messing them up. Uh, it's a matter of, like, the longer you play, the more your brain melts as well. So you're always going to be in, like, peak condition when you start. But now I've been playing for so long, it's just like, you know, what is timing? What is the B button? How do I press the B button? Uh, and you start thinking too much about it when, like, you know, if you just turned on the game, things would be second nature, where it comes to a point eventually where it's like, alright, you're focusing too much, which just kind of causes you to make mistakes you would never normally make. If that makes any sense, which it probably doesn't. Like, that's not how I beat that part. See, I'm overthinking it. That's not how I do that part. See, I'm overthinking it. Alright, now we have never made it here with both Kongs, so we're guaranteed to get by this part, which is pretty cool. But can we keep them both? Oh, just barely hit that top one, but okay. We, I don't think we've ever done this with Diddy, or we really kind of messed up the second we got here with Diddy. I think that's what it was. Okay, okay. I did that the first time, and I didn't really think too much about it, uh, but that time clearly did something wrong. Whoa, twice in a row, what kind of miracle is this? But you know, we can't get too excited yet, there's still plenty of opportunity to mess up here. Alright, another guaranteed shot at the world beyond this part. And, ugh. But okay, okay. So, the trick here is that you have to jump into the barrel once it's already starting to move back to the right. You can't jump into it too early. Right? Man, what did I do the first time then? Wow, three in a row, I do not believe it. <laughs> and then, too late that time, but okay. Okay. So maybe you do want to jump into it earlier then. Hmm, hmm. Oh, and this is where we messed up. What's going to come at you? Something's going to come at you. What? It's not done yet? What is this? Can I roll now? No. This is as fast as we can move. And it doesn't even give you the balloon? Whatever. Who needs those one-ups? And we get the gold jukebox back. And it's just... Oh, because... It was a real balloon. I mean... I don't know what to say. All I can say is... Diddy, run to, uh, to Wrinkly Kong as fast as you can. 
and save that data. And I know it seems like every time it's like, man, Andrew just really wants to end the video. No, it's I really want to save before the game explodes or the power goes out. <laughs> wow. That ended up being about a two hour in-game time ordeal. It wasn't that bad. It was just very precise and very, very, very easy to make mistakes. Like I could have easily shaved half an hour off that, you know, we got so far with Dixie and I messed up on that flitter going up and down. If it's not for that, we could have shaved off a lot of time. It's just a matter of every time you messed up at a part that was later in the level, you had to replay everything before it. And you can't run! So it was guaranteed to be a slog, but that was cool. I had a lot of fun. And I guess with that, two more levels and the true final boss to go. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you'll join me next time for the big part 3-0. So thanks and see you later. Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos, I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.